Thank you for joining Budget in Focus. My name is Kimal King, and I will be interviewing Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Mr. Diodat Indar. So, Mr. Uh, Minister Indar, we're going to be talking about the hefty public infrastructure budget. Uh, one of the things that the senior minister within the office of the president, which is responsibility for finance, discussed er, um, earlier this week. And the infrastructure budget was one of the heftier budgets, $96 billion. So to open our discussion, could you give us an idea of what are some of the focus areas inside this budget? Well, thank you very much, Kima. So you rightly um, said that the the budget um, allocation for Ministry of Public Works is $96 billion. So that's actually double what we had last year, more than double. Um, and out of that, $88 billion is capital side. Okay. Then you have the current, right? So you have to pay your staff, you have to do the normal repairs and maintenance and so on. You have, you know, the bills to run the ministry. But the capital side um, is $88 billion. And out of that $88 billion, $76.7 billion out of it goes straight to roads and bridges. So, as you know, in every uh, country that is um, looking at an industrialized, in a, as an industrialized country, uh, once you're taking that trajectory, it means that you have to build out the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So this budget, we actually started in 2020 to lay the groundwork. 2021, we continue to lay the groundwork and, and, and do some of the projects. And this one here now is a point where it's a kickoff. A major kickoff because the size of the entire budget is 552.9 billion dollars it's the yes. biggest in the history of the country mm. right um, so public public works have a, a, a huge um, chunk of this budget so your total capital spent for the entire um, country is about 217 billion and we have 88 out of that 88 billion out of that Okay. Right. So, as I said, seventy-six point seven is for uh, roads and bridges, um, and that is main part of Guyana. You know, the alien infrastructure. We have to put infrastructure where there's no infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, so that money is really to do to do that. What do you expect to be the impact of the laying down of these roads and bridges? Okay. Let's let's first talk about the roadside, mm -hmm. and the. the thousands upon thousands of people and the number of communities that will benefit. So the first one is about 2.1 billion for growth to Team Airy. Everybody, when they come in the country, the first thing they see is your road. And right. when they leave, it's the, the last thing they remember is the road. That, we're going to work on uh, repaving that entire road and there are parts that have to be extended and have concrete drains and so That is the first one. So that, everybody that comes in the country and leaves the country and those who, who permanently live on that corridor Will benefit. We also have $8.3 billion for Pal Palmyra in Region 6, straight up the crowd creek. We're extending the road on both sides and we're repaving the entire thing. That is a massive project. And the entire Barbies um, will benefit from them. Those who take goods to Suriname, bring goods from Suriname, the traveling public, everybody will benefit from that. We also have $6 billion in that envelope for the Linden to Mobura Road. Only yesterday I was there, I came back last night. The number of people that traverse the hinterland community from Georgetown and those who stop on the way straight up to Letem. And from Letem, people from Brazil who are coming into Guyana, those who trade from Letem, bring their goods <laughs> to Georgetown, through Linden, they will benefit from that. The miners, the loggers, everybody will benefit from that. Mm -hmm. So that's a massive um, force. Phase of the project is 121 kilometers from Linden straight up to Mubura Hill. And there's $6 billion, um, allocated for that project. Um, hinterland roads, about $3.4 billion uh, for hinterland roads. As you know, last year we had a flood. A lot of uh, infrastructure was washed out, damaged culverts and so bridges. We started building back, but there's much more to build. And you know, these hinterland roads, a lot of them are laterite. When mm -hmm. the rain falls and the heavy trucks go and, you know, they drive through the rain or through the slushes, it gets worse and worse. So you have to continuously deal with that, Right. The other thing is the Linden to Suzaik Highway, there's $2.6 billion for that. Again, there are thousands of people that traverse that highway, coming and going, whether it's for commerce, for, for leisure, they live there, they will benefit. Um, as you know, we are talking about building infrastructure where there's no infrastructure. So from the Ogle to Hagwash, we've been talking about that. The procurement didn't finish last year, that's the Indian funded one. But I think that we will have to adopt another model, but in the budget, 
we have 2.3 billion dollars for that and that is about a 7.7 .7 kilometers of four lane highway at the back there right to link the the, the communities to have a bypass road there that uh, highway that can carry massive amount, a massive amount of traffic All right and then we have obviously the the sheriff street the 1.1 billion there to complete that project it's been a while but a big part of this roads budget though Kimal, is there's 15.2 billion dollars for um, we call urban and miscellaneous road, community roads. Okay. Now that 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 allocation will benefit the actually the entire country. Meaning is that this is really this budget spend goes into the community, the small roads in the street, or the roads that are main access road leading into a, a, um, a small community. So that money will deal with it all the day, like the number one canal, the number two canal, the Black Bush Polders, you know, the the Hoop Road, the Maikoni Branch Road, the Hubu Road, um, all of these main access roads that we started building, um, that is to extend on that build out for the take it out. And then um, you have the community roads where every single community in this country we're building roads, every single one. All of the housing schemes, whether it's Tushin, it's Zillot, whether it's Diamond, whether it's number 76, 77, whether it's Monrepo, whether, whether it's Enmo, you name a community, we are building roads. Mm -hmm. On the East Bank Corridor, we are building roads. On the East Coast Corridor, on the Barbies area, we are building roads. West Coast, we are doing it. Region 2, we are doing it. Region 1, we are building concrete roads in Region 1. In the Mabaruma District, straight up to the to Hosororo Hoso Hill. And in Morocco now. So, that envelope of 15.2 billion dollars really will impact thousands upon thousands of people and hundreds of communities and that is where we touch the life of Guyanese people because okay. people sometimes they don't care about the big fancy hotel that's going to be built or the massive you know infrastructure that you're going to have at the ports they don't care about it they just care that when they drive in their car or they jump on on a motorbike so they have good roads to take them where they're going and bring them back and that is what this spend will deal with so that is a road spot, which is okay. about $49.2 billion for the road spot. Now, on the bridges, there is a big spend here for $21.1 billion for New Demerara Harbor Bridge. Yeah. You heard our president said that that bridge has to be built and we're working on it. So we have to get that bridge. Fixed high span bridge, moving traffic to and from Region two, region 3 to Region 4. And that there will be... Um, one of the projects that will be very impactful. If you go, I don't have to tell you, you go on the afternoon, try to go home on the East Bank corridor, you see what happening. In the morning coming in, there's traffic, you, it's mind-boggling the amount of traffic and cars that you have there. So that that bridge will deal with the, that, that problem, um, address it, and the reliability of it too. Because when you have to close the current harbor bridge, when you have to... Um, have uh, marine traffic you have to not in care move you have a backup of traffic on both sides when you lose that traffic it it doesn't bleed into the streets and the neighborhoods as fast as you want so there's always traffic jam there if you calculate the lost in man hours or value you know those are the things you can't calculate if you calculate the time people spend in a car rather than in their homes with their families those are things you can't calculate but it affects people um, so that is a major part. But then we also have the current bridge to take care of. Yes. So it's about a 946 million in the budget for, for that. We have to deal with the anchor, anchor uh, the anchors. We have span 9 and span 10 still to complete. So we have to keep that going until the, 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 the new one is finished. More importantly, that is just on this side. We just spoke about the hinterland community. There is $4.1 billion of spend that we have for 32 bridges. So from Kurpakari straight up to Letem, there are about 32 bridges. Mm -hmm. They are wooden, they are broken up, a lot of them are broken up, and uh, continue to get problem with them. And uh, since we are building out the highway to connect Brazil through Letem um, and bring goods to and from, we are fixing those bridges. 32 of them is $4.1 billion. Now this, these bridges, are uh, there will be um, concrete decking, they will have steel... Um, members okay. and they will have good um, gabion rocks to deal with the, the shoulders and so they are proper shoulders they will be broad enough to accommodate two-way traffic right so that is a major thing for the hinterland community and it's 4.1 billion dollars for that so when you look at it it this just that 76.7 billion dollars with roads and bridges it's, it touches practically everybody in the country okay right so that is just part of it okay 
Um, you talked about the roads in the hinterland. This change design means you expect more longevity in terms of the how, how long the bridges can last. Yes, it's Ashto standards. That these, bi- these bridges will be built to international standards. Mm-hmm. They're not the normal wooden bridges with wood members and so on. Like that, that, that would rot and that will, um, you know, that will sway when you have heavy load and so on. And they're designed to take heavy traffic too. Right? So they're broad and they're designed to take heavy traffic. So these bridges, this is something that is a real good intervention on our part. Um, our government is, because we saw what happened. Every time you get a call, this bridge broke down. Yes. You remember the issue with the Pirara Bridge? Mm-hmm. It's because it's a wooden bridge and it, 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 over the number of years it, it became an I- issue. And that compounding with people taking more than they're supposed to take on trucks just add insult to injury and these bridges will go. So Pirara Bridge is one of them on that list too. Hontoil, all of those those bridges that we, we visited when they had those problems. All on the Surami area, the Irokrama corridor, all of those bridges will change up. Okay. Let's talk about air transport a little now. Okay. We had some issues um, in 2021, some accidents that made us worry about yeah. the safety of air travel. <clears throat> mm-hmm. How is the budget 2022 addressing that? Okay, so with the budget, we have about $2 billion for air, tra- air, air transport. Mm-hmm. And we have about four specific uh, interland air strip that we target. Ittering it- Bank, Karisparu, Peruma, and Ikeriku Bottom. Okay. So we would have discussed, and then we have a figure also about three hundred million in the maintenance program to deal with it too, right? Mm-hmm. So you have a maintenance budget, but these are capital budget. Um, we have to keep these airworthy because what happened, as you know, we had incidents and accidents. Mm-hmm. So a lot of incidents happen with tires and people excursion and so on, and. It came from the flood one, when they washed out the lateral right. Some of them are lateral right airstrips. Some of them have paved airstrips. Some of them have these blocks tied together. Mm. So the different standard of different airstrips, but we have to address them. Um, so we have $600 million to deal with the four airstrip that I just talked about there, which is Itaringbang, Karisparo, Peruma, as well as the Ikeriki Bottom. So that will deal with that. But then we have the maintenance budget to deal with the existing ones that you know that the local air- aircraft operators fly a lot. Right. Right? Um, we also have um, $927 million for CGIA. We have to continue to build out that um, to make sure that, you know, the superstructure, the um, the the two new air bridges that we're going to put in um, and the extension and so on. We have to make sure that that airport is modern in keeping with our transformative agenda. How is the government's relationship with that contractor, um, China Harbor, progressing? Well, I won't talk and, and, Well, how is that helping the completion well, of this project? Well, I will say this to you, right? When we first came in government, it was pulling teeth mm-hmm. to deal with correcting all of the wrongs when we found that project. Yes. Uh, we have so agreed on a position where they will they will um, um, bail out the, um, the, um, the entire structure for the two-year bridges and government will put in the two-year bridges. And it's working. They're building. Not as fast as we can, but there are international logistics problems that, un- that affect everybody. Right. So they, they want exception to that. So we had to give them a little extension on the contract to make sure that they finish on time. But they are working apace. We visit them very often. We have conversation with them very often. Uh, we have a very strict engineer watching over that project on our side. What do you say to people who are frustrated and thinking this project has been taking too long? Very long. Mm -hmm. And people are frustrated, but rightly so. But you have to call a speed a speed. Mm -hmm. There were a time when this contractor wasn't doing what what they're supposed to do. When we came, we found 1,500 defects. Some of them were correctable. Some could not have been corrected because they were subsurface. They were in the structure. You couldn't, you just, it wasn't feasible to correct them. The ones that are, was, um, corrected a number of them they finished those and now they're dealing with the additional um, two air bridges and the structures for that and then they're also dealing with the superstructure right so we have we have some issues but we walk through them and we're working with the contractor the contractor is working with us to get this project finished okay let's discuss the energy expansion agenda okay so the government has two mega projects, I would say, the Amalo Falls Hydropower yeah. Project yeah. and the Gas to Energy Project. Mm-hmm. Um, because Guyana, uh, its economy is expanding, we need a lot more power. What do these two projects do for Guyana? Well, to start, let, let's just backpedal a little. Sure. So when you have an a economy 
that is operating with power, mostly power that is self-generation in the manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the economy is dependent on the utility company that is producing power at 30 US cents per kilowatt, the highest in the region, you have a problem. You have a national issue there. One is that people cannot make the amount of returns that they want to make as a business. Mm -hmm. Households cannot retain for savings as much as they, 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 they would like because of the bills that they have to pay when the month come. Okay. So those two things, are from a household level, from a kitchen table issue, to a business, business issue. Business level. Mm -hmm. the, on the business side, it wipes out your profit because it's demand-based. It's demand your energy consumption as you have more activity just cuts out from your bottom line. And because the rate is high, it, it, it affects you. So you have two issues. You have the competitiveness of it and then you have the reliability of it. We have to fix both. So what we are doing here with the gas, the energy project and the Amalia Falls project, the Amalia Falls is 165 megawatts. Mm -hmm. That will have a PPE arrangement with GPL. They will sell power to GPL. Okay. The gas, the energy project is a 300 megawatts installation that will give you a net output of about 250 okay. megawatts. Mm -hmm. That, the two of them add together, will deal with the base load capacity for demand in five years. GPL yes. projected will be between 415 to 450 by 2025. So you will deal with the base load. Then you have to deal with the transmission system. The transmission system is very old. Every week you see GPL putting out some kind of thing that they got to go and fix something on some transmission port. It's land something. Something is always the issue on the transmission. Line. We have to upgrade it because you will have now high voltage coming through the system. 230,000 volts now will be coming through the system. You have to have better substations. The substation have to be equipped with proper breakers and protection systems so that you won't have these shutdowns as you call them. So when you have revolving capacity to deal with the demand, in the same breath, you're cutting the costs. Because when you deal with when you deal with uh, the Amalia project, the, the figure that came in is 7.7 .7 cents. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about the gas, the energy, you're talking circa 5.5 cents per, kilo, um, per um, kilowatt. So look at that compared to 30 cents per kilowatt. It's chalk and cheese yes. in terms of costs. And then you're talking talk about the, the green side of it. You're talking about a renewable energy and a bridging fuel. Yes. Natural gas is a bridging fuel. The world uses it. It burns half the amount of, um, it, 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 sorry, it emits half the amount of, of, of CO2 into the air as against this heavy fuel oil that we currently use. Yes. With those big heavy, uh, we call them those reciprocating engines. Okay. Like the Ward and the Caterpillar engines and so on, the Nigat engines that we have at GPL. So we're not saying that, you know, we won't have that. We'll keep that as reserve capacity. But at the same time, what we have is cheaper power, cleaner power. And once we make sure that whilst we're building them out, we have the transmission system being built out in con concurrently with the built out of these two major projects, what you will have is a modern power company, a modern grid with modern um, generating capacity. So when do you see the transmission infrastructure being it has to be done. It has to be done concurrently with the built out of the plant. Mm -hmm. Because when you finish the plant, you're moving 230,000 volts into the, the transmission system. Mm -hmm. So you have to build it concurrently. So in terms of, you know, I, I get a lot of black coats yeah. and people complain about that all the time. Every day you see GPL put out a notice on Facebook saying yeah. that there was a failure. When can we see that being reduced? Well, that is when you start to do with the upgrade of the transmission system, which GPL is currently looking at. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these, so GPL has 276 kilometers of what we call primary lines. That is a high voltage line. Mm -hmm. And then another 786 kilometers of secondary lines. Th that two infrastructure there, which take the high voltage and then it break it, it, break it down to your 110, 220 current that you normally have. Mm -hmm. That infrastructure is it's done with wallable pole. They lean. They, once they lean, you have a sag in the wire. They touch one another when the wind blow. Yes. It feeds back into the substation. Cause a shutdown. So that is what needs to be fixed. In addition to a lot of the areas of the transformers, they're old. So, you know, you get a blackout in the community. When you look, the transformers park. The transformers is old. You have to change out. So you have all of those things that you have to look. Remember, you have it is it's, GPL is a big company. It touches the lives of every Guyanese on the coastland. Right. 
and uh, you know it affects people so we have to get it right we must get it right and we've been working to get it right and we have the, I, we believe that we have the right set of plans to get it done okay there are also some smaller renewable energy projects to deal yes. specifically with riverine yeah. and hinterland locations. Yeah. The government says it wants to provide uh, solar power to about 30,000 hinterland yeah, homes. Correct, correct. How is that going to be done? Well, right now we are still awaiting the procurement of that. Mm -hmm. um, once that is the case, we get we get that in country and we are expecting that in 2022 because we we have the we have signed the uh, agreement with the government of Illinois. Seven point two okay. nine million US. It's yes. a lot of money. Thirty thousand home systems enough to power out, um, a refrigerator, one hundred sixty five watts. But then they also have some others that are bigger that can deal with the community side because you know we got about in excess of two hundred Amerindian or what we call riverine community yeah. that are off grid. So that will be suited for that purpose. So that will be rolled out with training as well when we when we when it arrive here. But in addition to that, we are also building three. Uh, we are we are looking to uh, resuscitate the Moko Moko, and we're building the Kumu and the Keto Hydro project. So okay. there are also um, that inside of it. We also are looking to um, build up, and there's a purse for 1.1 billion dollar for solar PV farms in Bartica, Wakenham, Lake One, and in Letem. And then we have a number of off-grid solutions that we're doing in some of the remote communities, right? So we do have a number of these renewable energy projects that are off-grid, but we also have 33 megawatts of grid tie solution, right? That grid tie solution is using the, the Norway funds that we had stuck up for years that we didn't able to program because of a whole lot of issues. Yes. So 33 megawatts, we'll put that grid tie solar PV system in, in a sequible Linden and, and, and Barbies. Yes. Right? So that is also catered for in the budget, 1.4 billion. And then, as you know, the power station at Kingston moves power through the, um, the railway embankment to, to um, Sophia, mm -hmm. to the substation. That line five, you call it a line five, right? It loses power for generating power. Once it generates it, it loses power when it delivers it to, to the um, Sophia substation. So we are changing out that line five, right? Um, to make it more efficient. And that is about a $1.6 billion um, for that project as well. So we have a number of them, gas, the energy, the uh, Amelia project, all of the off-grid systems. But we also have the, the Hinterland Electrification Company. That is about seven small satellite companies in, in Madia. We have in Madia, Mabaruma, Letem, Linden. Um, so we have them all over. Um, and, and those, they also have about 450 million inside for capital works in terms of generators and so. Yes. Right? So those communities are, they have grid in those communities, but it's of grid areas. Right? So there are there, there grid, there, are grid in, there, there is a grid in Mabaruma, but it's it's not on the main grid then, right? There's a small grid there. So you have to make sure you have the generating capacity. Some of the engines are old, so you have to renew them too, you know? Okay. Where are we specifically on the larger projects in terms of um, how close to construction? Um, Which particular one? A mile of falls and gas to energy. So gas to energy, right now you saw that they had some expression of interest came in, right? Yeah. Good. And then the same thing for the Amelia. There was some gas, uh, there was some... Uh, um, expressions that came in for that they, that is in the negotiation stage the Amelia project mm -hmm. the same thing for the Demerara Harbour Bridge is at negotiation stage with the potential awardees okay the um, gas the energy as you know we just received the bid is now going through evaluation right so the, that is the procurement side with the Ogre project um, we are waiting on no objection from the government of India um, mm -hmm. at the Indian Exim Bank right because there was some change in the arrangements so all of them are at this end point to, to kick off the, the construction phase. Um, the Linden to Mubura, we we just awaiting um, an objection from the CDB mm -hmm. to start our project so we can award. Okay, for specifically for the gas to energy and a Milo Falls project, these projects have gotten a lot of flack, some controversy. Yes, yes. Amila has been a contemplated project since a previous pre PP government. Correct. What assurance can the government give us now that they're going to proceed these two projects? Well, it's two different conversations because yeah. the one, let's leave it the Amelia project first, right? 
in the past the model was different yes the model how the project was modeled was different mm. in addition to the modeling of the project the cost elements in the total cost the 22% of the total cost of the amira pro- project in the past mm-hmm. was soft costs okay. interest costs and other admin costs those are no longer there because what you're doing now the developer whoever is building it out and bringing the substation in mm-hmm. and selling it to the power company they bear all that risk they're building it out they're selling us at a rate that we're going to buy and we sell to our customers okay right so the, the whole model change up but the location the site and so on remain the same okay right that is with the amelia project so that is the what two clear distinction there with the old model and the current model that we have with the gas the energy project that project there um is handled through the ministry of natural resources okay and uh, the vp also um gives direction on that so that project there again you saw what we, what came we're going through the right way the site the selection of the site yes i i spoke for 30 minutes in parliament w- with the motion that um that previous minister patterson brought yes and i i said exactly that the site selection was done systematically it's not just one or two criteria it's a long list of criteria um that you have to fit to go to to wales expansion uh, f- for further expansion away from population density you know um river access a whole host of things that you had to consider um for that project and the size of it is in keeping with the future demand of the country yes and then you're using a you're using a natural gas from your find offshore so if you don't use the gas what else can you do with the gas if you don't use for power you have to maybe have a liquefaction of offshore who knows if the amount of gas offshore can support liquefaction mobile liquefaction plants you don't know so the, the sure bet is that you have a power problem in country you have a cost problem with energy Mm-hmm. you have a reliability issue with energy yeah. and you have the gas outside here why not pipe it in everybody on art who would have had that if it was a no brainer they would do that everybody e- everybody in the world that has gas that is um, that they can monetize to help their population they do it they can reduce cooking gas they can reduce a whole set of things um, that we use right so power once power costs go down countries tend to pick up in economic development because people invest more because their financial modeling shows low energy costs it means that their profits go up right and then you have to look at it is every industry is affected by energy costs so when every industry is benefiting cost goes down they can yeah. sell off cheaper mm-hmm. and you can buy your inputs for your business cheaper your even if you have a supermarket the truck that brings it use diesel to bring it the people that manufacture it use energy to create it those goods so if all of that goes down it arrives in the hand of the consumer cheap, cheaper right right so you have to look at the long chain of economic benefit that derives from cheaper energy right now minister 2021 has uh, pronounced for us the vulnerability that Ghana faces in terms of climate correct um with the floods that we had especially in may that affected mm-hmm. every single region mm-hmm. the president went to uh the united kingdom to talk to the world Scotland, about the yeah. importance of climate yeah. mitigation and adaptation mm-hmm. what do we see the public works ministry um budgeting to um respond to the issue of climate change so we have 5 billion dollars in 2022 for that mm-hmm. and there are a number of areas that we have to put in like gap grove you have a resource you have bengal you have legwan zelandia So they have um, you have Maria's delight you have a lot of places that need capital works yes which is the reprop system that we put in right that is when the 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 erosion cycle erode uh, down to the mangrove because mangrove you remember it's dependent on the root yeah so if the trees get tall and they have beaten on the root the, the weight sometimes topple it right okay. we had this problem at Romsek yeah right so adaptation and mitigation is what we have to consider now because the global target of 1.5 degrees celsius um temperature stabilization by 2050 the oil and gas sector the global oil and gas sector is up in arms with that target mm-hmm. countries that may pledges are not sticking to those pledges but what you find is that we have found 
oil and gas we have a legitimate right to monetize it at the same time we have a pristine forest our forests our country is eight, well, 87 percent forest cover and out of that 87 percent we maintain about 99 percent of of the forests that we have and the grasslands and the savannas and so mm -hmm. and because of that our the capacity of our forests to hold carbon store it is about 19.5 billion tons of carbon that is yeah unheard of and we, we our annual sequestration is about 154 million tons per annum so we have the ability to lead in this regard in the environment but although we are leading in the environment we also have to cater for those who do not lead yeah. in this regard who mm -hmm. who continue to to, to um, emit co2 and they don't have the mitigation measures um they don't have the policy to help them reduce because of their particular economy it yeah. affects us mm -hmm. sea level affects us so it is it, there are, there are studies out there that says if we do not change trajectory the sea level will rise by 0 0.56 meter by year 2100 that means that low lying states or coastal states will end up getting flooded so it is something that you, you have to grip with reality. So you rightly put it, you have to deal with mitigation and adaptation measures. So we are looking to make sure that the mangroves are there, the mud, mud bank system that generates the mangrove and have it growing and so, that we help that process and where we can put in the riprap, which is very, very expensive to do. Yes. It is actually a last resort because it's that expensive. So we have to make sure we put that in because... Uh, you know, everybody builds closer to the shoreline. The city is close to the, the shoreline. Yeah. So we have to make sure we do that in, in, in keeping to with the thinking that we also have to have good drainage in the system. So you have to have proper drainage system. That's why we're putting those, um, those um, massive sluices in. We have three massive sluices we're going to put in now, similar to the Hope Canal one, right? To help with drainage. But then in Georgetown itself, the, the building codes collapse. If you go around the city, you find everybody build a small bridge, you have a small thing like that and move in the water. When it blocks up with garbage, the water goes nowhere. So we uh, ourselves got to make sure that we have a good and effective drainage system to when you have the rainfall, it moves out quickly, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so your adaptation and mitigation measures are key for the survival because our, our, our investors, especially in the tourism sector, they want to build where this population sits. So you will find it in Georgetown and the periphery of Georgetown. Most of, you know, those hotels might want to put up their thing. They won't want to go far out, you know, uh, unless they're going to an eco resort or some kind of thing, right? So, and then investments to so people want fast proximity to ports, you know. You remember distance equal money, you know. You got to move stuff. You got to get a truck or a car or something. Yes. So distance to market, distance to delivery means money. You got to pay for stuff to move. So the closer you do that, is the cheaper for your operation. So um, I'm in agreement with you that uh, mitigation measures and adaptation measures are key. And in our budget, we have $5 billion for that in 2022. Okay. And then we also have another couple of hundred million at, um, in the maintenance side. So structures that we would have put up in the past, we have to maintain them as well. Minister, in closing, could you give me your thoughts on all aspects of this budget 2022 mm -hmm. that was presented how do you how well do you think they come together so you know in 2021 our economic growth is 19.9 percent mm -hmm. it's maybe two other nations have that kind of growth then in 2022 it's projected to grow at four to seven point five percent that's the highest in the world it says something about our country one is that the investment climate is good two is that we are on a rise and we're going to grow rapidly and we have to cater for that rise. We have our people have to make sure that the, every opportunity that presents itself, the Guyanese go after it. No longer can we wait to be led. We have to lead, and we have to lead boldly. And the government budget, our budget that we put of 552.9 billion, opportunities will abound from it. Then you have a local content law that has just been passed. That will promote, that will bring more opportunities to locals, right? So the mix of things that you have going on 
whether it's spending from the public sector, investment in the private sector, the mix of the two provides opportunity for people. When it comes to the cost of living, you just spoke with it, uh, about it just now, the cost of living is something that everybody um, faces. Global, there, globally, there's a problem with supplies and there's a problem with inflation. The first world countries are having it. We've been so far down in South America, cut off from the main supply chain, uh, main supply chain, um, chains them that they have in, from La Havre in France or if you're coming through the Can Panama Canal or if you're coming down from under Africa from the south if you're coming from from uh, the Asian bloc and you're bringing goods to this part of the world all of those supply where we are geographically is far out there's a, there's a there's distance from them from production centers and storage centers across the globe that is the products that we consume on the supermarket shelf because of that you end up with costs inflation because a container that used to um, cost you 3,300 US out of China, <coughs> it's now about 20,000, right? And you get it not six weeks anymore. You got to you gotta wait, you got to hope that you get it in three to four months. So you have a problem. And this budget also addresses some of those okay. to, to, to assist people. In addition to that, the budget also deals with excise tax on fuel. And a whole host of measures to deal with with taxes that we remove remove them, right? So fuel, as you know, the cost of fuel affects everybody, and we have reduced that from twenty to ten percent. Then we also remove the two percent on the um, the small the small man. You know, the small contractors when they go to get a little job, they gotta pay two percent advance tax. It removes it. That that you said dig into the to the cash flow for small men. So. We did a lot of other things um, in the budget that speaks to, um, you know, the social side of, 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 of things in yes. Guyana. Um, I, but if I go into that, it will, uh, it will take us all night. But I think the other ministers would have come and, sp and speak about their sector, just like I'm doing with uh, mine as well. But I think the budget is, is one that we have never seen before. We got to make sure that we implement the projects fast and we got to make sure we get quality work. From, from contractors, we got to make sure that we do it in a way that it, it meets our people in a, in a most positive manner. Okay. You've been watching Budget in Focus with Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Diodat Indar. Thank you for joining us, Minister. Thank you.